I have my Maya file right here. And I, as you know, how to do a turntable. Uh, right now, I already did my turntable because, as you can see, it's right, right in here. But what I did is I simply increased my frames. I said, hey, I'm going to do 168 frame, 24 frame per second, 7 seconds. And then I went into my animation, visualize right here, and create turntable that you see is highlighted. Now, if you decide to do it, be aware that you want to go in the options right here, and you want to make sure you increase right here the number of frames. Otherwise, it's the, by default, is 24, that it won't help you at all, because it w w will do quite a mess in the sense that it won't you know, really create the turntable in the 168 you want it to be created. Uh, so, sorry, I'm increasing the volume just in case that, since I'm recording, that my voice comes across really weak. Um, so, you know how to do a turntable. Now, now I play it, and it seems to play kind of like a little bit on the fast side, but not bad. So, what you do next, if you're happy with, with everything, you say, oh, I can go in and render my uh, animation. What I suggest you do before doing that is I suggest you go under the... Um, uh, rendering menu actually no no wait wait sorry this is still on play blast uh, sorry it's still in animation sorry you go in here and you go under playback and you'll see something called play blast right here so if I launch the play blast look what what happens it shows me right here a little movie a little preview of how my little fellow is playing and you notice the play blast shows you that it plays a lot slower than what it is in if I hit the play button down here. In fact, let me minimize it again and show you. My point is, if you go and play blast, you actually get the true speed of your animation. So if I was you before doing anything else, make sure you do a little play blast and you're happy with that speed. But I want to tell you another thing is, this is right now a little movie. You see it says camera spin animation dot MOV. The only downside of this is what is rendering, it doesn't render, render shadows, it doesn't render material properly. It, if you, I on purpose had selected something, that's why it's, it's, it's bright green back there, and it sure you know, shows that through the play blast. So, so the play blast is a, you could save it as, you know, a, a movie, but it won't have everything you need in there. So be aware that it's really important that eventually you still render. The play blast is really to get a little preview of the speed of the animation. That's what you want to do. And again, if I play here, you see how it goes a lot faster than the play blast. Okay, so having done this, being happy with the speed that I actually am, now it's time to render. And you know how to do a little batch render. If not, let's show you. Now, finally, we switch to the render menu, what I was trying to do earlier, and I said, wait, 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 Play Blast is an animation. Rendering and render batch render. Before you do that, before you launch the batch render, you want to make sure you have all your um, ducks in a row in terms of render settings. So you want to click on the render setting button that is, oh, here, sorry, here is all compressed, so it's hard to see it. Right here, perfect. So, we are rendering through Mentor Ray, and what you want to do in this case, because we're going to assemble everything in F check, it's totally fine to have your uh, uh, image format to be an IFF file. That's totally fine. If you prefer a TIFF or anything else or a Targa, go for it. But IFF is totally fine. Now, down here, you have various options. I want to show you this because this, to me, is important. Do you remember how I told you that oftentimes software recognizes your images based on the extension, and the extension is determined by the period? So when the software sees that dot, that period, then it reads the, the three letters after that, and if it's PSD, it knows that it has to launch Photoshop to read that image. If it's, you know, uh, INDD, actually that's uh, InDesign or AI, depending on which extension it sees, it will launch the proper software. So here you have many different uh, options. I think the most, um, uh, the default is this one, that is name, number of the frame, and then extension. And that would work with FCheck, but I don't like that this image it will ha has a dot right here, and, and that's not good. So what I tend to do, and it's just probably me being anal, I want to make sure that you guys know right away that 
what the, the extension is, and right after the period is what, when the extension should be. So instead of having two periods, one before the number and one after, I have only here one period. And I like this format a lot better. But again, it's kind of up to you. If you use F-check, it'll, it'll understand both ways. Another problem here I had earlier this morning, I wanted to render my entire 168 frame, but I didn't realize that actually the start frame was 1 and the end frame was 10. So I launch my animation, I go, you know, do whatever I was doing this morning, I come back to it, and I had render 10 frames. I was like, ah, because I was thinking I want to demo in front of the class, having rendered the entire thing. So I relaunched the batch renderer, this time saying from frame 11 to frame 168. That is why you saw that. Now, make sure you, you don't do my mistake I did this morning, and you put the entire, from the first one to the, the last one. Now, let's say instead, you know that for your demo reel, you don't want the whole turntable, you want only part of it. Why would that be possible? Why would you think at times you might say, hey, look, I want only the first, you know, 70 frames? Do you remember I told you that at times, if you look at demo reels online, you'll see that the very first part of the model you see is the whole rendered with materials, with lighting, with the whole kind of bells and whistles. Then, while the, that thing is spinning, it turns into wireframe, right? And then it might turn into ambient occlusion. What that is, is you take your files, you save it three times, one time you do a, um, a batch render for the first this many frames with the whole shebang, the second time you convert it to be wireframe, the third time ambient occlusion. My point is, there might be times in which you say, hey look, I know my turntable is 168 frames, but one third is this, one third is that, or maybe the beginning, because it's a full shebang, you want it to stay a little longer and the other two a little shorter. But there might be times in which the start and the end frame are not actually from the first one to the end ones. Be aware of that. And then we can go down here. In this case, is perspective is what I need because when I do that turntable, when I go into that create turntable, it makes the perspective into the turntable camera one that here is clearly shows that they're both renderable. Here, I actually use 640 by 480. Just because I wanted to uh, render really quickly this morning, I have all the images to show you. I did not want to have a whole big high resolution thing. I tell one thing, even at 640 by 480, it took about almost an hour to render this tiny little thing. So I, I, I tried my best to keep it kind of small so that it would be easier to get those images to demo to you. So once you're f happy, I mean, and I encourage you to go everywhere else and see all the, the component, but let's say I'm happy with my settings. I'm going to say close, and then I'm going to go and say render. And first of all, I should, before I, I do the batch render, I should show you something important. If you go in the usual Maya structure, so if you go in documents, uh, Maya, right here, projects, default. You'll have an images folder, and right now my turntable right here, I already render all this this morning because I, I don't want to be here wait, you, with you looking at me for an hour while it's rendering. And I'm going to call it, actually I'm going to call it two for the sake of it, or I'm going to call it turntable camera underscore done. Turntable camera images done. Okay, but that that folder that is called turntable one, et cetera, et cetera, actually Maya does for me. When I launch a batch render, what it does is it creates a folder inside the images folder that has all the images I need to then launch F-check and make my movie. So you understand now even more why I've told you how important it is to keep that default folder kind of untouched because I have all my scenes in here with all my files. I have my images in here with, in my, in my case, maps, so the UV maps here for the UV editor, texture editor. Here I have other things, and this is my, my turntable one that Maya did for me. And then obviously I have source images with my sketches and et cetera, et cetera. Okay, but I, now you know that the images are going to be placed by Maya inside the images folder. So now you say, okay, great. So I'm going to go right now, and I'm going to go and say uh, render, batch render. And again, you can actually go in the options and look and say, okay, what what is, there is nothing, the, the default is honestly pretty good. But you have two options here. One is batch render and close, and the one is batch render. So again, either way works. In one case, what it does is, um, 
it batch render in the background versus the other one it you know it will you know batch render and then close it my point is in one case you can use Maya in the front and it's batch rendering in the back and the other case is not so let me actually um, simply say batch render and it's telling you is educational we know that continue and down here you see it says render rendering with mental ray I'm going to actually close this and show you that if right now I go in my script editor that tells me what Maya is doing, first it's telling me saving a temporary file, and guess where it's saving it? Inside project, Maya project, default scenes, camera tur turntable, it gives this temporary name. So it takes that file that I'm launching the batch render on and creates a, a temporary file that is going in and rendering, and then it's telling me that it's rendering with mental ray. And then you'll see a certain point down here under result, it will say done, okay? So once you're done, and now you know that there is one version, that, the one that I just saved as turntable image is done, that is sitting there for you. So imagine we actually went through it. I'm going to actually let this renderer go to show you that indeed, let me go in here, is creating a turntable camera right here, and now you don't see anything in here because it's rendering the first image. But you will see that here it starts growing. You know, you'll see image one, two, three, and four. But I already have that done. So let's go next step. That is, what do I do with F check? And by the way, here is showing you the Maya that is rendering and then the Maya in the front that I can work with. So what do I do next? I go and launch F check that, by the way, I already have in here. I'll show you where it is in a minute. It, it ships with Maya and is installed by default. So if you go in applications Maya, Somewhere you'll find, or sorry, an application, sorry, Autodesk. If you go in here, Maya 2016, and you see this is F check. So if you double click on this F check, it'll launch and it's basically for the moment parked right here. Oh, I just realized I quit out of it. Sorry, I thought it was launched, but it's not. Right here, there is my F check. So what do I do next? I go in File, Open Sequence. I'm going to browse to my usual Maya, Projects, Default and images. I'm going to go in the one that I saved images done earlier and I'm going to select the very first one that in my, my case of my computer is organized backwards so it's at the bottom but that's okay and I'm going to say open. Now you see how fast it goes and most people say whoa that's crazy I'm, I'm hitting the space bar to stop it but when you go and say file and save as a movie you need to trust me that I did it just about an hour ago, and the movie is down here, and this is how it looks. If you notice, it's much, much slower. It's the same story I told you earlier, that when you're inside Maya and you hit the play, play button, it goes really, really fast, but what this movie actually goes is at the speed of the play blast. Make sense? Okay, so what you have to realize is that you will have to use F-check if you have mental ray, but it's not too complicated or anything that you uh, will have to, to do much except launch the software and then go in and say file open sequence and then at the very end that I didn't show you because I already had it if you're happy with you know everything you can go and say okay now save as a movie and you can call it I'm gonna call it test for the sake of it and I'm gonna put it on the desktop once again and I'm gonna say save and use transformation is fine that makes it smaller by the way there's an option which it saves just you know the like if you're doing a PDF from a, a Photoshop file kind of flattens everything and you just have that image and then there's another one that has more data within within it so I, I chose that the smallest one now let me go in the, and find in this mess test should be right here all right here this is it this is the one I just saved this test and if you double click on it, it will click convert, converting, and then it spins. And then when you try to close it, it will tell you to rename it. And you do that, and then you got it for good. And you can just simply turn it in. So um, any questions? I'm going to quit this 